Mmm, Killers of the Flower Moon. Hey, Scorsese's 50 billionth film with Leonardo DiCaprio. And um, Leonardo DiCaprio's 50 billionth brilliant performance that he probably won't win an Oscar for. What should we say about Killers of Flower Moon? So I saw it in the perfect environment. So you can be happy that any negative criticism I have about this film is not based on my viewing experience. I went to an Odeon Lux and Dine. I was on a fucking recliner. Bloop. Comfy as fuck. Perfect view. Had fucking food delivered to me all the way through. I was a big, a big fat puffer fish. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Just enjoying the, the, the experience. Culinary experience and visual feast. And, um... I... It's a three and a half hour film. I have to say that it's paced incredibly well. So another recent uh, three hour plus film was Oppenheimer, which I think was bang on three hours. I think it's paced better than Oppenheimer. Um, I think the last hour of Oppenheimer was questionable. Whereas in this film, granted I was being fed the whole time, but I, uh, I really just felt engaged the whole way through. And I felt like... I. It didn't sag at any point. I, I do I do feel like the narrative isn't necessarily um, streamlined. And, you know, you could pick scenes or aspects of the plot that might not necessarily be as important. But I didn't feel at the time like, oh, come on, crack on. For a three and a half hour film, I looked at my watch once and it was to check when my next meal was going to turn up, literally. So, I mean, wow, because that, yeah, I mean, sometimes in two-hour films, I'm checking my fucking watch. So that was brilliant. Leo DiCaprio is great, and I think, like, um, I liked it a lot because he is playing someone who isn't in, it, in any way heroic or charismatic or funny, really, or like, uh, uh, yeah, charismatic is the best word for it. Because I think he's so good at that type of role. If you think about his other kind of top performances, talk about Wolf of Wall Street is obviously fully based on charisma and like sna being snazzy. And uh, The Revenant, he is like a hero in, in certain senses. A couple of examples. There's not many examples of him. There's, there's, there's examples of him being like villainous, so Django. But even in Django, he's supposed to be like a charismatic guy. In this, he's supposed to be the antithesis of any charisma or he heroism. Like, he's supposed to be just an absolute fucking dweeby little twat of a man. Um, and you don't really like him at all. And that's... There's nothing appealing about him and there's nothing even striking about him. He's supposed to be just really, really kind of almost like a background character, but the film is about them because of what they did. And for that reason, I think it's one of Leo's best performances. I thought it was brilliant. Still hope Killian Murphy wins the Oscar, though. I just think that film will be held in higher regard culturally in the long run, um, just because of that performance. I think that performance holds that film up more than I think uh, more than I think was obvious on first viewing. Um, that didn't really make sense. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Martin Scorsese does a great job, as usual. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? I mean that the pacing, as discussed, which then comes down to the editing, which was fantastic, then comes down to, like, the cinematography and the general storytelling was brilliant, and I felt like um, the direction of the actors was fantastic because Leo was a great perform did a great performance. And Robert De Niro, probably one of the best Robert De Niro's since... Probably the best since, like, Silver Linings Playbook, isn't it? And that's generous. Like, he, he was really great. And and, and Jesse Plemons and, and Lily Gladstone, is it? She was unbelievable. Um, I hope she does win Best Actress. Um, what else to say about this? Yeah, I felt like negatives um, were that I wanted... So there, it's about killers. It's about the killings in the Osage community in the twenties, in order uh, for the white community to like gain the oil money that the Osage community had rights to, um, and it, so it's quite an intense story. But I would say I didn't quite feel the intensity of the killings. Weirdly, they were quite dispassionately told. Maybe that was a choice. Um, but I wanted to feel like a rise in tension. So then we get to a kind of court case situation at the end. 
And I didn't necessarily feel that kind of community horror of it. I did feel Leo DiCaprio's tension. So I did feel like he what he was doing to his wife was wrong. He did kind of love her. But then at the same time, he had this like nefarious uh, goals. And I felt like you could see that in his performance. So that was good. Um, so just to skip forward and say, you know, if I was writing a film magazine, I would rate this five out of five. My personal rating is actually a six out of ten, which might sound weird because I'm kind of just showering praise on it. Um, but I, the only way I can describe it is I don't think the highs were very high for me. I was engaged and locked in. But there was very few, if any, moments that I can pick out where I was like, wow, you know, this is like transcended into like something different. You know how, let's go back to Oppenheimer, how that really does at multiple points in that film, you're like, oh, fucking hell, a certain scene or conversation, line of dialogue, um, effect or something like that. Um I didn't really get that in this. There are a couple of, I mean, there were loads of really nice moments, but I didn't ever feel like, you know, shock and awe. Uh, and again, maybe that was a choice, but just my personal point of view, personal, personal point of view of my experience, six out of 10. But as like a filmmaking feat, it's absolutely a 10 out of 10. Um, so... It's subjective as to how you rate the films that you see. So I guess it's a recommendation either way. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming, guys. We'll see you next time.